Hello guys and welcome to this video. In this one, we are going to start and look at how we can organize our CMake code. In the last few previous videos, we took a look at how we can organize our CMake project into targets. And we were able to break our code into libraries that are used by other libraries, and this is all good. But so far, our code, our CMake code was living in a single file. And I tried to think about it. If you have a bigger project, for example, you have hundreds or thousands of lines in your CMake list.txt file, things can really be hard to think about. And CMake provides a way to partition our CMake code into small pieces that we can then include in other CMake files. We have two common approaches to this in CMake. One is using the include command, the other is using the add subdirectory command, and in this video, we will be focusing on the include command here. Now, let's look at the structure of our project. The project is similar to what we did in the last lecture. We have a math library, which is going to be depended upon by the stats library. So the stats library is going to be pulling things from the math library. And we have an application binary target, which is going to be pulling stuff from the stats library. So the way we will be setting up our things, we will have a main CMake list that takes the file. It is going to be containing our binary target, but we will also have logic for these libraries living in separate files. So we will have a CMake script whose job is to contain logic for the math library. We will also have another CMake script whose job is to contain logic for the statistics library. And our folder structure is going to be looking something like this. So we will have the root of our project here. The root directory is going to be containing a build directory, which is going to be containing our build files. Remember, we are using out of source builds because it's really clean. It doesn't put junk in our source folder. We have a source folder, which is going to in turn contain a math folder and a stats folder. And we will have the main CMake list.txt file at the level of the root folder here. So the CMake list that txt file is going to be living here, but each of these folders is going to have its own CMake script, whose job is going to be containing the logic for each respective library here. This is what we have to do. Now, let's look at the scripts we will be setting up here. We will have our code living in files that have the .cmake extension. This is the extension that CMake uses for scripts. These are meant to be included by other CMake files. If you want, you can read up on this .cmake extension. You can search in Google. You're going to find information on this. We have one for the statistics library. Notice that what we did really is copy stuff from the main CMake list.txt file and put that in this file here. So we have the stats library, which is going to be made up of our stats CPP file. We will be setting up our include directory and we will be linking to the math library nothing special that you don't know yet. We also have our math library, which is going to be made up of the super math file. It's going to be living in this directory. We will have our target include directory here and everything is really going to fall into place. Once we have our target code in our scripts, what the main CMake list that txt file is going to do is to include those scripts. When we need to set up the math library, we just tell the CMake list that txt file here to include code from our math CMake script. We do the same for the stats library. Notice that we don't really change any other thing. We set up our executable binary and everything is going to work just fine. One thing I want you to notice, however, is that the include path, the folder paths that we set up in our CMake script, this is something that can confuse a lot of people. We set up the directory paths relative to the folder that contains the top CMake lists.txt file. This is something you really need to notice here. If we go in our add library command, notice that we are saying go in src, but src is really living in the root directory. So we are doing things relative to the root directory where our main CMake lists.txt file lives. But we are doing that even if we are really working inside 
a script that lives in a file nested down in our source hierarchy. This is something I want you to see and be careful about. This is one reason I don't like the include command. Another thing I should actually say right now is that what the include command does is really like copying the content that we have in our script and making that content available at the location where you use the include command. This is basically the same thing the C or C++ preprocessor does when you include stuff. It's basically copying code and making it available in the main CMake list that txt file. This is really all there is about this. Now is a good time to head over to Visual Studio Code and play with us a little more. Okay, here we are on our file system. We will set up a new folder, which is going to be containing the code for the current episode. It's going to be named episode 009, I think. And I think we can actually copy code from the previous project and use it as a starting point. This is going to do so. Let's go in here and put in our code. We have the source folder. We have a CMake lists that txt file that we can use as a starting point. And we can open this folder in Visual Studio Code just like we always do. This is going to open the project here. Notice we have the math library, we have the stats library, we have the executable target. And if we go in SRC, we have our things here. What we want is to partition our CMake code to live in separate folders, and we will be using the include command. One thing I would actually recommend you do is to go to Google and search for CMake include, and you can read up on this, and we will have the documentation for the include command. You can read up on this if you want, but we will give you the basics here. So what we want to do first is to create our CMake scripts. So we go in our math folder and set up a new file. It's going to be named math.cmake. This is the extension that is usually used by CMEC here. So we go in the stats file and we set up a folder or a file. It's a file, it's not a folder. It's going to be named stats.cmake and it's going to be containing the logic for our stats library. Now what we need to do is to copy the code here. So we can do something like this and go in the math.cmake script and put in the code. This is really all we need to do. Notice that we don't even change these include directory paths because CMake is going to pick this up exactly like it did in the main CMake lists.txt file. Now we can take out this. Okay, we will be including the code from our math script. We can go in our stats script and paste in the code. So let's do that. We can copy everything and put that in our stats CMake script. And we can come back and delete everything here because we don't need this. Now that the code is living in separate scripts, we need to include the code that we needed to set up the math library and the stats library. So we will say include and we will say SRC and say math dot cmake. This is going to be our script. We do the same for the stats library. So let's say include src stats dot cmake. This is the name of the script. Let's try to build and see what happens here. But notice that now we have achieved the goal of breaking our code into logical things from the perspective of cmake here. So the logic to set up the math library is living in this script. The logic to set up the stats library is living in this script. Let's try to build and see what we get. So we can show the terminal. We can show what we have in here. We need to set up our build folder. So mkdir build. We cd into build. This is the usual thing. And we need to sell cmake to build using the ninja generator. So let's do that if I can type. And we need to build what we have in the directory above this, where the main CMEC lists that txt file lives. Let's try to configure and we will have a problem here. We can't find the math.cmec script. We can't find these guys here. So what is going on? Oh, notice the problem here. 
our math.cmx script is leaving in the math folder. So we need to correct this a bit. Let's say math here and say stats. We got excited too quick and we made typos here, but no problem, we can fix them. Let's tell our spell check to ignore these things here because we don't want these squiggly lines. And we can try to configure again. So let's say cmake to configure. It's going to generate the build files. And if we say cmake build to build this, it's going to generate our rooster binary. And if we run, we see our mean here. Now, notice that our logic has moved in these scripts, but one thing to be super careful about is that CMake is not going to do anything fancy here. It's just going to be copying the code when you include. So when we call include here, it's going to copy everything we have in math and make that available here. I'm not exactly sure if this is what CMake does, but the result is exactly the same. Why am I saying that? Because even if we are in this math script, we are setting up things from the perspective of the location where the main CMake lists that txt file leaves. Notice what we do when we say add library. We say src here, even if we are leaving inside the math folder. So it's really like we are still leaving in the CMake lists that txt file here. We which leaves at the root of our folder structure, but we are doing this inside the script, which is nested down into our folder structure. We are doing the same here. When we say cmake current source dir, we won't be getting the location where this script lives. We will be getting the location of the cmake list that txt file that included this script here. This is something you need to be careful about. Another thing that you need to be careful about is that doing things using the include command is going to pollute the global scope. I know we haven't talked about cmake variables yet, but if you happen to set up a variable in this script, it's going to be like you set up that variable in the global scope and it is going to be polluting things. For example, if you change values, we will be changing values in the global scope and it might not be what we want. Some people use the include command. I don't like it. It makes CMake code hard to reason about. One of the main reasons being that if you are in the script, you may think that you are working in the folder where the script lives, but you really are working in the location where the file that will be including this CMake script lives, and it can confuse you a lot. This is really all I had to share in this video, showing you the include command. The good thing about it is that we are able to partition our project into logical CMake units, and we can include things later on to set up our thing. The logic for the math library is living in this script. The logic for the stats library is living in this script. The downside is that it's going to pollute the global scope. It's just going to be working like a C or C++ preprocessor does, copying code and making it available in the main CMake list that txt file. Let me know what you think about this. We are going to stop here in this video. In the next one, I think we will be talking about the add subdirectory command, which is going to solve most of the problems we noticed with the include command here. I am going to stop here and I will see you next time.